Welcome to chapter one of the book of Colossians. By now you've viewed the videos from Dr. Nunley looking at the history of the city of Colossae, looking at the Apostle Paul and looking at the theme of this book. Now we're gonna start jumping into the scriptures. I have the privilege of walking you through chapter one. So I'm gonna walk you through just selected portions, verses uh, that stand out and I'll give you my commentary, and then other speakers will do the same in chapters two, three, and four. So let's get started. In chapter one, Paul begins the letter like he does many of his letters. It says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae, grace to you and peace from God, our Father. Right there in the intro, I wanna speak just a little bit to identity, and function. Paul understood his identity in Christ and his function in the body of Christ. So I would ask you, do you understand your identity in Christ and your function in Christ? Because we all are children of the Almighty. We all belong to Jesus Christ. We all have a function to play in the role of his body. So I would encourage you to stay in prayer and understand what is your function. Paul knew what his identity was and he knew what his function was. He also knew what his relationships were to other. If you'll uh, look at verse two, to the saints and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae. He spoke to those in the church and he called them brothers. He understood the deep relationship because we're all part of the family of God. So be encouraged, we're all a part of the family of God. The second set of scriptures that I wanna point out starts in verse three, goes through verse five. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, since we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Look what Paul says about the church in Colossae. Since we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus, He's implying their faith is strong. He's heard of it. Their faith is known throughout the world. Their faith is known as being strong. So he's heard of their strong faith in Christ and of the love that you have for all the saints. So not only the faith in Christ, but also he recognized their strong love that they had for one another. Huge implications here, right? We are to have a strong faith in Christ and that strong faith in Christ then gives us a strong love for others. What a hope in that. And that's what he ends with, right? Because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have that strong faith. You have that strong love because of the hope that you have in heaven. So we're going to go to verse 10 now. So as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power, according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. There's a couple of key words I want you to think about. I want you to just pause and think about. Look at verse 10 again. Walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. Are you worthy? Are you walking in a manner that's worthy, that's pleasing unto God? The second word is bearing fruit in every good work. Are we bearing fruit in our daily walk? Are we being loving? Are we being kind? Are we being respectful? The second term or, or phrase is increasing in knowledge of God. Are we learning? Are we increasing in the knowledge of God? Are we allowing ourselves to grow, not only in the word of God, memorization, but just growing in the love of God, growing in the faith of God, growing in the hope of God, growing in the service and the generosity of God, increasing in the knowledge of God, which then strengthens us, verse 11, and then verse 12, we give thanks to the Father. Giving thanks, that attitude of gratitude, as the saying says. 
Lastly, for chapter one, I want to hone in on verses 15 through 20. And these verses are some of my favorite verses in the Bible, talking about the preeminence of Christ, the one we serve. And it says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by Him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through Him and for Him. And He is before all things, and in Him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, and that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. What a fantastic statement on Jesus Christ and who he is, the forever God, the Son of God, the eternal God. And this is the one who loves us, who encourages us, who died for us, who rose again so that we might have eternal life. Does that power resonate in your heart today? Does that power resonate in your mind today? We love you. We're praying for you and enjoy the rest of this great letter.